So today we're talking about Final Cut Pro Library Management, how to keep your library size small so you can avoid this. The dreaded not enough free disk space error message that's either plaguing you repeatedly or popping up on occasion, but at the absolute worst time. So let's get into it. First tip and quite possibly the most important, disable background rendering in your Final Cut Pro preferences. This is where you go, what's rendering? And I say files, render files, render files that if unchecked will bring your computer to its knees and grinding to a halt. So Final Cut Pro generates render files to make your footage playback smoothly with high quality so that your effects, titles, transitions, etc., all look nice and crispy. Without render files, your timeline may play back a little choppy or some of your footage with effects or transitions on it might look a little blurry or kind of weird. This doesn't happen all the time, and most often you can make it through your edit without rendering anything in your timeline at all. But if you do render your timeline intentionally or unintentionally, your Final Cut Pro library is going to increase in size. So let's look at a Final Cut Pro library that has a video that's done, but the timeline hasn't been rendered. The library size is only a small amount of megabytes. If the timeline has been rendered, that same library increases in size to X number of gigabytes, a large size. The longer you work on a project and make changes, add or remove effects or transitions, the more render files you create. Final Cut Pro by default has a preference enabled called background rendering. This means that Final Cut Pro will render your timeline in the background when you take short or long breaks from editing. Now these render files take up space on your hard drive, whether you're editing from your internal hard drive or a portable external hard drive. And Final Cut Pro does this because it not only helps with smoother playback and better rendering of effects, it can also make exporting your video when you're done happen much faster. Final Cut Pro is trying to help you with your workflow, but it can only do this effectively over time if you know exactly how it works. If you don't know how it works, you're gonna get the not enough disk space error message that we all dread seeing. Now, the way that you know Final Cut Pro has rendered or not rendered your timeline if you look at the top of your timeline window, you'll see the sort of gray dotted line across your timeline. There may be sections where you don't see the gray dotted line, and there may be times where you don't see it at all. If you don't see a gray dotted line, it means your entire timeline has been rendered. If you see portions of your timeline with a gray dotted line, it means that only portions of your timeline have been rendered. If the entire timeline has a gray dotted line above it, it means that none of your timeline has been rendered. Now, if you're someone who's toggling background rendering on and off, it's possible that you may see the gray dotted line and your library still has render files on it. If you have a section of your timeline that's been rendered before, but then you make changes, add a color grade, put some effects on it, you'll see that gray dotted line appear again because now that you've added or updated the effects on your clips, it needs to be re-rendered to play back at highest quality. To keep Final Cut from continuously generating render files as you edit, go to Final Cut Pro, Preferences, Playback, and deselect the Background Render checkbox. But don't I need Final Cut to render my timeline? Not necessarily. I edit mainly on a 2013 Mac Pro with 4K XFAVC footage from my Canon C300 Mark II, and I disable background rendering in Final Cut because I don't need Final Cut to render those files to give me smoother playback. Having your timeline rendered in some instances can make the export process go much faster, but you'd be better off saving that timeline render for when you have picture lock on your edit. You're not going to make any additional changes, so you'll only be creating the render files that you absolutely need to help with that export. There's nothing extra to clog up your hard drive. But what if you have some effects or transitions on a portion of your video and without background rendering turn on, they look blurry and kind of blah when you play them back? Well, that brings me to my second tip for keeping your Final Cut Pro library small. You should only render portions of your timeline that you need to to see rendered because of effects or transitions. Well, how do I just render a portion of my timeline? Select the clips that you want to render. Then use the keyboard shortcut, Control R, to render just your selection. You can also go up to Modify, and at the bottom of the drop-down menu, choose Render Selection. This only creates render files for that portion of your timeline. But can I fill up my hard drive if I render selections like this enough? That's certainly possible, but much less likely since you're only rendering these small portions. Now, you may be wondering, well, how can I delete these render files? And that brings me to my next tip, deleting generated library files. Final Cut Pro has a system in place for deleting the render files it creates as you edit. To access it, select your library in the sidebar and then go to File, Delete Generated Library Files. From here, you can select the unused render files or all render files. Unused render files are older render files that were generated from earlier stages of your edit. 
Final Cut Pro isn't using them for playback, nor will it use it to assist with your exporting or sharing your timeline. Personally, whenever I do this, I choose to delete all render files. Now, before we do that, let's take a look at the library's current size in the inspector. Take a look at how much space your Final Cut Pro library is taking up, usually an amount of gigabytes. Now, let's delete the generated library files and see what the size is reduced to. The Final Cut Pro library goes down in size significantly, down to a few megabytes, and your hard drive's free space increases as well. Now we're well on our way to preventing the not enough disk space error message from ever showing up again. Now these first three tips are the most essential for keeping your Final Cut Pro library from taking over your computer and reducing your free space on your hard drive to zero. Now this next tip is for any intermediate users who are working with multi-cams in their videos. Final Cut Pro has a setting in the preferences menu that is checked by default when you install the software. If you go to Final Cut Pro, preferences, and playback, you'll see an item that says create optimized media for multi-cam clips. You can see I have this box unchecked and I think you should too. Now why? In most instances, your Mac will have enough power to play back a multi-cam clip that's two or three angles with no problem. Where it gets difficult is when you have multiple camera angles of 4K H.264 or HEVC footage, and you're using an older Intel-based Mac, especially a Mac Mini or a MacBook Air, or even a 13-inch MacBook Pro. H.264 is incredibly resource-intensive for Intel-based Macs to play back smoothly. And because a multi-cam clip is playing multiple angles of this footage at the same time, it can keep Final Cut Pro from playing back that footage smoothly. So Apple designed Final Cut Pro to automatically optimize that footage to ProRes for better playback. The only problem is that ProRes footage takes up a ton of space and the files that Final Cut Pro makes to optimize the footage in your multi-cam clip are stored inside your Final Cut Pro library. One multi-cam clip that contains three angles of 4K H.264 footage that's 15 or so minutes long can take up hundreds of gigabytes of space on your hard drive. If you have a small internal hard drive, you can max it out just by making a single multi-cam clip in Final Cut Pro. So until you fully understand optimized media, Working with multi-cam clips and managing all the data they can create in a 4K workflow especially, it's best to just keep this box unchecked. Now, if you do find that your multi-cams are dropping frames or playback is choppy, you'll need to look into getting a large external hard drive or RAID array to ensure that you have the hard drive space to accommodate massive amounts of data that optimized media for multi-cams creates. Now, if you've created optimized media for your multi-cams, there is a way that you can delete that media through Final Cut. Just go up to File and then choose Delete Generated Library Files and you'll check the radio button for optimized media. That will delete all of that high capacity ProRes footage that Final Cut Pro created to make it so your multi-cams play back smoothly. Now, another mistake some beginner editors make is copying their imported media into the Final Cut Pro library. When working with Final Cut Pro, you have three options for storing your media. You can store it in Finder on your internal or external hard drive, preferably in an organized folder system. You can store it in your Final Cut Pro library. So let's say you just shot a bunch of footage on your Canon EOS R and you're going to import it from your SD card. On import, you can tell Final Cut Pro to copy the files to the library. This will make it so the media you're importing is stored inside the Final Cut Pro library package and Final Cut Pro will keep it organized for you. You won't be able to go to Finder and look at your footage. You'd have to open the library package and find it in there, something I highly recommend not doing because you can really mess up your library if you start moving stuff around or if you were to accidentally delete something. The third option, and this is the one that happens to most beginners by accident, you end up storing your footage in Finder on your hard drive and in your Final Cut Pro library because on import, you don't select leave files in place. So I just wanna be clear here that what I'm talking about is if you took your footage off of your SD card from let's say your Canon EOS R and you drag and dropped it into Finder to copy it into Finder. You'll see all of this footage here in the Finder folder. And if you use the importing method in Final Cut Pro where you drag and drop from Finder into the corresponding event, you have the potential for duplicating your footage on your hard drive so that it's in Finder and in Final Cut. If we click on our footage event and double check here that in the preferences menu, we have copy to library storage location. This means that if you drag and drop from Finder into Final Cut, it's going to automatically copy that media into the Final Cut library. So if we go back to Finder and look at our Final Cut Pro library and look inside of it, we go to Footage, Original Media, 
now you can see that all of that footage that was imported is actually taking up extra space on our hard drive because it's both here and it's here. So you have it in two places at the same time. And that's why in the preferences menu, you want to make sure that you have leave files in place selected if you're storing your footage in Finder. And this third option is what gets most of you into trouble. You're doubling your storage demands because your footage is in two places instead of just one. So if your SD card of EOS R footage contains 15 gigabytes of footage, you're using up 30 gigabytes of hard drive space because you're storing the footage in Finder and in your Final Cut Pro library. If this has happened to you unintentionally, the only real recourse is to go to your Final Cut Pro library in Finder and right click it and tunnel down to the original media folder that contains those copied files and delete them. And that's pretty much it. Five ways you can keep your Final Cut Pro library small so you don't accidentally run out of hard drive space on your internal or external hard drive. That's going to do it for this video, everyone. You know the drill. Like, share, subscribe, click all the things, and until the next one, I'll see you all soon. Save it for conversation.